Hello, my name is Kelsey Eichard and today I'm going to be discussing the fishbowl lesson plan activity. This is a lesson that I have done many times with my ninth grade honors literature class. This is typically the lesson that we will do after the conclusion of our reading of Lord of the Flies, the novel. So the activity, after we finish reading, students will participate in a fishbowl activity and I typically have them split into three groups. The three groups represent the division within the novel. So I like to make a connection back to the fact that in the final chapter of the novel, there are really three groups. The groups of the group of the boys who follow Jack and Roger in their pursuit to kill Ralph. And then you have Ralph and his isolation. And then you have Sam and Eric who are kind of the mediators in between the two groups. So I like to use the three different group numbers to parallel that. And in the fishbowl activity, each group represents a concept that they are going to explore. In group one, we'll be looking at the characters. Group two will be looking at the symbols. And group three will be looking at different literary elements. So the overall objective, um, students will be engaging in a fishbowl activity to discuss, to explore the connections between character symbols and the literary elements present within Lord of the Flies. Students will be provided with the details pertaining to their group and they will be responsible for facilitating the discussion on their concept. So if you again are unfamiliar with the fishbowl activity, the group that is in charge of leading the discussion will be in the center of the circle, whereas the other two groups will be on the outside of the circle. The center group will be leading the discussion while the outside groups take notes and jot down key ideas and terms. So how the students are going to be assessed. They're going to be assessed on the accuracy of their information in their presentation. So are they connecting things the correct way? Are they using the correct definitions? Things like that. The involvement in the discussion, are they contributing to the inner discussion? If you are in the fishball group and you are fishballing, you're, you need to contribute and speak in the discussion. The collection of information and content from the other groups. This pertains to the two groups on the outside of the fishbowl, the ones who are observing. We need to make sure that we are taking accurate and adequate notes so that we may be prepared to discuss after the fishbowl activity in a whole group setting. And finally, the ability to contribute to the post fishbowl whole group discussion based on the concepts discussed. Which leads me to after the fishbowl, each group, after each group finishes presenting its information, we transition to a whole group discussion. The whole group discussion is centered around the themes that are present within the novel. And what I typically like to do in the whole group discussion is discuss how the symbols, characters, and literary elements contribute to these themes. So not only are we coming up with the themes that are present in the novel, we are adding elements that support those themes and that become a catalyst to continue the novel on. Some things to note, each group will be provided with either a list of the symbols, characters, and literary elements along with details on each item. The group will be responsible for connecting with the list and the details and sharing the significance of each item during the fishbowl. So it's more than just, hey, this character is this person. You need to, these groups will be discussing why that matters. So group one is the characters and the names that we are going to be discussing are Ralph, Jack, Roger, Sam and Eric, Piggy and Simon. And the details that they are going to be given are extreme brutality and bloodlust, responsibility and leadership, order and civilization, unrestrained savagery, violence, and the desire for power, natural goodness, scientific rationale side of civilization, and unity and loyalty. So what each group will be responsible for doing, if you are in the character group, you will take these six characters and these six details and figure out which detail goes with which character. After you have completed that element of your assignment, once you're in the fishbowl, you will present your information in this way. So, Ralph is the one who represents responsibility, leadership, order, and civilization. After we've addressed those details, we will then discuss why Ralph is important to the plot. Ralph is important to the plot because he is the individual who reminds the boys of their 
goal of being rescued. He is one of the few boys who shows a sense of maturity in that he wants to stick to the tasks that they've been that have been assigned. He wants them to get back home and he ultimately cares for the younger children that are often neglected by the older boys. So after that, each person in the fishbowl group will discuss their character and follow that similar pattern when they're presenting their information. Group two will progress the same way, except they will move to the symbols. We have some symbols here, the beastie, conch, face paint, the Lord of the Flies, piggy specks, and the scar. We also have the details about each of those symbols and they will follow the same format. They will produce the symbol and the detail about the symbol and then explain why that symbol is important to the plot, the theme, and how it contributes to the novel. And finally, the third group is the literary elements group, and here we have allegory, archetype, characterization, symbolism, and theme. And again, we have the details to match, and this is more important than just the novel itself. This is where we take the novel outside of just the pages that William Golding wrote and expand it into the greater connections with the greater world. So this group is going to be taking um, these five elements and explaining how it contributes to good literature. So why is characterization important? Why do we need to know about the um, inner meanings of a character? Why do we need to know about an archetype? Why do so many stories follow patterns? Why do I sit down in a movie theater and watch a trailer prior to my um, film and think, wow, I think I've seen that movie before? Well, it's because most film literature follows an archetype. So we will discuss that. If students, one thing to know, if students are struggling to connect the content back to the themes in the post um, fishbowl discussion of the whole group setting, we can revisit the main ideas that were discussed after chapter 10 reading. Before we do the fishbowl lesson, we discuss some of the main ideas of Lord of the Flies. And um, sometimes I will put a refresher up on the active board to kind of jog their memory about these main ideas because most of the themes of the novel stem from these main ideas. So the concept of civilization versus savagery, the loss of innocence, the nature of good and evil, absolute power, and innate fear. All of these can contribute to these overall themes in this post whole group discussion. And ultimately, this is how we prepare ourselves for our final assessment over Lord of the Flies. We take time after this fishbowl to really dig deep into the themes of Lord of the Flies, and we combine the main ideas with these elements from these three groups to create these themes. And once we create these themes, all of these details and these notes that students have taken during the fishbowl discussion are catalysts and evidences to use when they compose an essay on Lord of the Flies. And what we would typically do is take the themes that we have created and discussed in this post fishbowl whole group discussion, and we will use those as our thesis statements for our essays. So this is a very buildable lesson, and it is something that you can tweak to make it applicable to any novel that you read. Um, so this is one that I use quite often in my class.